information to help you run your business better and improve your marketing campaigns. My name is Hank Hoffmeyer, and thank you for joining me on Hank's Marketing and Business Tips. Welcome to episode 217 of the HMBT podcast. Today I have Olga Andrianko with me. She is from SEM Rush. She's the head of global marketing. Together with her team, she has built one of the strongest international communities in the online marketing industry. Olga has expanded the SEM Rush brand visibility worldwide, bringing more than a 90% year over year growth with top 10 new markets. That is awesome. She's also led SEM Rush branding across 50 countries ensuring marketers all over the world have access to the best software to run effective online marketing campaigns. And in 2018, Olga was mentioned among the 25 most influential women in digital marketing by top rank. She speaks at marketing conferences and her quotes on online user behavior appear in media outlets such as Business Insider and the Washington Post. Very impressive resume there, Olga, and I'm glad you can join me on the show today. Excited to be here. Thanks for inviting I know I know a lot about SEM Rush because I've been in marketing so long, but if folks uh, that are listening in today don't know about SEM Rush and what you do, can you kind of give an overview about your uh, offering and your service? Yeah, sure. So SEM Rush uh, is a software for marketing professionals, and uh, we started as a SEO uh, and PPC tool. Um, so mainly working and helping um, search marketers. Uh, they typed in the names of their competitors in the tool, and they could see the keywords the websites were ranking for, uh, the ads that competitors placed, and um, so it was more around search. And then we expanded the SEO toolkit so now um, marketers can also analyze the health of the website understand what content they should write um, rank rankings daily and then we expanded to various well, social media tools so basically we tried to ensure that we have every tool a marketing professional could use to understand their online visibility like the, how visible the brand is on other websites on social media and search and advertising everywhere and also to compare it to their rivals and understand how can they do better how does your pricing work is there you know free is there a free trial and then obviously paid yeah. options how does that work uh, we it's a freemium model um, so we have uh, all together 5 million users that use us as of today and um, well majority of those are I would say well free users um, and um, they are able to analyze uh, 10 um, domains per day and also even um, um, take um, like, well analyze their website like 100 pages of their website and also track um, uh, their well some keywords for um, and understand how they rank for keywords that they care about so that's that's what they could do for free and um, then also they we have free uh, we have um, uh, three um, plans uh, which just unlocks more and more tools uh, if you go up but that starts with a uh, hundred dollars which also so it gives you access for 30 tools or more. I would say that um, the price of each tool just becomes really, really cheap when you um, divide that. So. All right. If you haven't checked them out, please do that. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything just to take a look and, and use the tools. And then if you find it to be valuable and you want more tools, you can pay for that. That's awesome. Uh, Olga, when you go to conferences, what topics do you typically speak about? Um, I speak um, because we have so much data. I highlight our um, studies um, about Google search. And then I, for example, now uh, there are a lot of um, elements in search. And sometimes for different key queries, people could see videos or they could see top, see top stories and then are featured snippets. So we analyzed thousands and thousands of SERPs. Uh, certain result pages and we were able to understand um, the trends so that's what I um, share um, also we for example can analyze what's happening with the voice search we've done that with uh, 20,000 queries we just asked uh, to digital assistants google digital assistants and um, uh, then analyzed uh, how website like what websites need to do to be the choice um, that well, um, for Google, and then also I share a lot about 
um, how we do marketing for SEMrush. And um, I can, um, so uh, I talk about uh, social media, I talk about PR, and I talk about um, a global brand going local, for example, uh, because we work on so many markets and uh, also retention. So everything that kind of my team does and uh, what I can publicly share. There's a lot to unpack here and I want to <laughs> kind of go line item by line item. Many times I've said that video is very popular right now. You know, 85% of content online is being consumed through video. And I talk about how even as a small business owner, you just get in front of the camera or, you know, talk over a PowerPoint slide if you're kind of shy. And you mentioned Google search. How important is video in Google search these days? Um, YouTube is a part of Google, sort of. Um, and uh, Google shows videos for almost, well, um, for majority of uh, queries. And for some, for example, we, when we analyzed voice search queries, um, then we um, identified videos as the third most important element um, that Google takes the answers from. And what we've seen is that Google took the answer not from the beginning of the video, but from the middle. So they are able to understand text um, in, the, in, in the way of just extracting the snippet that would be um, most, most suitable for answering uh, the query. So I would say that they're very important and they're becoming more and more important, um, especially with Google introducing Google Hub, um, so digital assistant with the screen. And uh, that's where obviously they would want to show something. And then the most engaging content that they could show is the video. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, YouTube is very important. That would not, uh, if, you, if the main goal is to drive traffic to your website, then probably YouTube will um, actually distract um, but if, let's say, if you rank for, if you want to rank for a really competitive keyword and, um, you're like number 20 or 30 or even hundred, then you're not likely to actually really go up, um, quickly. So uh, creating, uh, content on YouTube and optimizing in YouTube, which is a less competitive space would has, well, um, uh, is actually, well, it can help you to, uh, go on top of all other queries because YouTube videos rank on top. And that means that you will actually at least steal some audience that would not anyhow likely to be yours anyway, because you're in, in, the, well, in the position 55. I think people in the past or, or still currently, they go directly to YouTube and they search for videos, but they don't realize the majority of people now are just doing general Google searches. And yeah. I do that uh, a long time ago. If I needed to repair something on a car, I would go to YouTube and say how to replace this part on a car and get the video. But now I find myself just using Google because sometimes if it's simple, an article will do, but sometimes I do want to see that video. And also I want to see how long the video is. In other words, if I'm just trying to replace a part that just screws in, I don't want a 20 minute video. I want a five minute video. And if I see in the search results, that's a short video. I'll probably watch that one because I know it's a simple job, but then the 20 minute video or something, the guy's going to stare and talk and talk and talk and talk or try yeah. to sell me something maybe. And I appreciate you talking about how they actually data mine those videos and you look at the content throughout the video, not just the beginning or not even just from the title, they're getting so much more rich content from there. Then you started talking about voice assistants. Um, and I know, what was it? Amazon came out with the first one, the, the, and then Facebook, right? The show, and then Amazon has the video one. Now Google's gonna have it, and then we've gotta wait for Apple to perfect it, right? Cause they always come last and they perfect everything uh, is what they call it. But that's gonna be important because humans are visual by nature and we need those and voice assistants. And part of the reason I started my podcast years ago was my challenge to number one, listen to myself as a speaker and reduce filler words when I was editing, which helped mm -hmm. me a lot. Number two, I wanted to get on the Amazon Alexa, which I did. And I'm noticing that I, there's a lot more what I call skill activations, which is my skill you have to put on the Amazon Alexa to hear my podcast are going up. I'm getting more and more as every month goes on. And it's almost as much as regular listens from regular podcast platforms. And that's the future that, you know, the voice search and uh, voice, what do you call it, recognition, voice assistance, they are all going to be more and more popular. Do you have any tips or ideas on as a small or mid-sized company, how can you leverage the, the, the power of these digital assistants? 
Um, so we analyze, we analyze the text, the length of the text and, um, we, well, I don't, I have good news and I have bad news. So I start with the bad news. So Google picks, um, most of the answers from top three, um, in, well, from top three positions in search. Um, and that means that it's increasingly hard job to go, well, to, um, reach those top three positions before you even have a chance to rank. Uh, but also the good news is that um, there is some things that, well, small and medium-sized businesses still can do, and uh, that's increased the page speed of their website. And this was number, well, like this was top three ranking factor for a voice search. Um, and uh, Google absolutely like, picked their fastest websites. So this is un well, already under your control to, um, compress the images to ensure that website, your website loads as fast as possible. And uh, then also try to optimize the keywords. So um, voice search really um, mostly happens in uh, informational queries uh, when uh, people are searching for some locations or they're searching for some information like um, what's the capital of Great Britain now? Well, it's, uh, something like that. So, uh, that, well, we've checked the, well those queries as well um, in the in the study, and um, then what we analyzed is that the content, uh, the the length of the answer in Google um, is forty two words. So this is something that also, if you maybe have an FAQ page, then um, pointing out the questions that people are asking, not necessarily about your business, but um, something like the topics that would um, um, be related to your business. And then optimizing the paragraphs would also help because that, well, the Google has this 40, 42 words um, to take as an answer. It's a lot of great information. And I know a lot of people always put, you know, website updates, optimization, or, or even, loading your website faster on a back burner. Oh, I'll do that next month, next year or whatever. I know it's important, but I think it's fast enough. But you just said that that's important to being ranked or being visible on Google. Pay attention to that, folks, because it matters, especially with the human attention span being so low. If your website is not going to load quickly, even after they find you via search, they are not going to stay there. If it's not going to load quick enough, they're going to move on. They might go to your competitor or something like that. But, you know, it's important to take a look at your website and do it yourself, research it or hire a company to help you or use tools like SEMrush to, to help you with your keywords and uh, see what your competitors are doing as well. Uh, you also talked about uh, what you do for marketing and mm -hmm. what are some things that you guys do that maybe are not, you know, cut and dry that maybe are a little bit different or kind of interesting. Sure. So um, I can share the um, latest big campaign that we've done. And I would not say that it's, um, um, it would be a campaign that um, small business can um, pull <laughs> off, but uh, medium, yeah, I would say for sure. Uh, and um, so we had um, we, the insights that we were working with is that we um, and understood that video was really engaging format for our audience. And uh, we had a conference where like, well, 7,000 people um, attended. So we thought, okay, this really works for the audience. Webinars, um, our, um, the amount of people registering for a webinar is um, always like over 700 and close to 1,000. If we take, if we have less than 500, then we would consider that not the successful one. Um, and uh, also we have the audience um, that is global. So we need to cover Australia, Europe, and North America at the same time. And also we are not understood that we needed to go beyond search because as I mentioned, we had a lot of new tools, but our audience was mainly search. So we needed something to expand to new audiences and then combining all this together. Um, I came up with a crazy idea of having 24 hour online conference. And that would be nonstop from four locations and locations were Sydney, London, New York, and San Francisco. Um, and then the stream would be well hosted from studios because we wanted to set the new standard of online conferences um, and ensuring that we have the highest quality of the sound and of the picture. 
Um, and so we just went all along with it and we actually released the conference. We had 125 speakers and then it feel, felt like we ran four conferences in one day. And we had, and also we didn't, um, we didn't name it the SEM Rush Conference. We named it Global Marketing Day because we wanted uh, speakers from different brands, and um, they are happily joining the conference that would be non-branded, um, but powered by the well. So someone needs to pay the bills, right? So then, uh, but everyone is happy to join something that is just for the audience and not. Brand it. Um, and the goal was also that majority of the people who join uh, would be uh, that would be their first touch point with SEMrush. And um, yeah, so we um, we gathered. Uh, we actually had like fifty six thousand people joining. Wow. Um, and twenty thousand watched um, online, and then the others just watched the screen. It streams. It was absolutely free to watch for everyone. And um, yeah, that was a crazy campaign, uh, but that, well, that we just fulfilled all, all our goals. So that was engaging video content that was super high quality. That was not the single technical issue. So it was flawless. And the relationship with uh, brands and then marketing executives um, has really strengthened. And 80% um, of uh, people who joined were new to SEMrush. So that was just... Uh, people that are not really well search related but they came from um, basically the channels that we haven't utilized and uh, they discovered the tool as a host of the conference so that was uh, the campaign well it um, the cost of the conference was a bit uh, more than two hundred thousand um, dollars so that's like that's a super tiny budget for what we pulled off uh, to be honest, with the studios rent, with all the logistics, with the teams on site. And then, so it's just, yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't say that it's huge, but that's still scary budget for, um, for a small business, obviously. And also, uh, we don't really expect those um, leads con to convert quickly because, well, like our goal was to um, increase awareness and ensure that we cover like absolutely new audience. So it's just the beginning of the path. Um, and yeah, that, that was, that was a super daring campaign. Um, and, um, well, like, um, three of my team members were working full time and then a lot more just like a designer team were taking the tasks on and off. But so this is one of the bigger campaigns. We have uh, definitely smaller ones and niche ones. <laughs> Uh, but this one, I think this is uh, what made me really proud of my team and that what they managed to achieve. Well, I think it's interesting that you said that. And obviously, you had a very large budget and you ran it for a long period of time. Probably had some great speakers. But with the coronavirus scare, there's a lot of conferences that are being canceled and people are not thinking about going to conferences and they might not go in the you know, near future where you could take advantage of that small, mid-size or large business. You can start doing more webinars and then partner with other people like you and I are partnering on, on this podcast right now. Um, if you're a plumber, you know, you could partner with an electrician and kind of give tips on both sides, you know, if that's what you do and run that webinar and teach people how to do home improvements on their own. Yep. people will tune into that possibly to take advantage of that because if for some reason you know the coronavirus does become more of a pandemic and then maybe it dies down in the summer but then resurges again next year in the winter it's gonna I think it's really gonna change how people get together in public spaces especially at large conferences you know that have maybe over a thousand they might rethink that and start doing that more digitally. I recently went on GenieCast, which is more of a virtual conference type of uh, platform, and that's where people go, and I would just present virtually. I think that's the future, and think about that. So do more video, get it on YouTube, do more webinars, or if you don't want to do a webinar because you're afraid a lot of people are not going to sign up, just do a Facebook Live. Uh, and if you don't have a lot of fans on Facebook, maybe you can run ads to get people to come to your Facebook Live. And I'm glad you brought that up because I think that that is something that's on the horizon is, is more virtual conferences and virtual meetings. I did one for marketing profs uh, two years ago and, I, and it was fun. It's, yeah. it's fun being behind a computer because I think you can be uh, a little bit more confident in speaking rather than getting up on a stage in, in front of hundreds of people and talking. Uh, it, it's different. Right? You're talking to a camera in a way, you know, people are there, but you're talking to a camera and 
one question for you on video, since yeah. you talked about virtual conference, we talked about YouTube, subtitles on videos, are they important? Yes. Um, depends on the length of the video, right? So if that's a webinar, don't bother uh, because whoever, well, if people already decided to dedicate 40 minutes of their time to you, then they're gonna uh, well, put the sound on. Right. Uh, but if that's, um, if that's a 10 minute video even, and then you want to send your message across and well, that's a like educational video, then subtitles are important. and subtitles are a must if you put something uh, on Facebook ads and on Instagram ads because people watch these well the, the th their threads um, on Facebook and Instagram with sound off because while well, then they're commuting or when they're at work um, and then you just want them to engage them uh, even if they have sound off for me for my hobby and videos I do outside of my employment with eye contact, um, I want to keep my costs low. I use InShot, which I kind of paraphrase what I'm saying. And that's a tool. It's an app that you can use on iOS. Then I use ClipScribe, which is a newer platform. They're actually like uh, very new and, and they're still full of little bugs, but they actually automatically do the subtitles and then they can add them to the bottom and then they have the header at the top where you can put uh, a title. Do you have any other tools or recommendations for people that want to add subtitles to their videos? Um, unfortunately, I cannot. Well, that, I'm not that hands-on with uh, video, so I I can ask my team and then send some recommendations for the tools, but not at the off the top of my head now. All right, and if you do shoot me an yeah. idea or two, yeah. I'll put it in the show notes. Uh, I know like Premiere uh, Pro and then um, was it Final Cut? They, they have the ability to do that, but obviously those those platforms cost a lot of money. YouTube does add them for free, but only if people turn on closed captions. And, and what I used to do is let YouTube do the actual subtitles and then I would export them and then burn them into my video using another tool like Final Cut. Uh, so those are some options. Reach out to me. Um, maybe Olga will give me some great tools or, or maybe you and I can work together, you folks in the audience, figure out how to get that done. Because it is kind of important because we all scroll through our, our social media feeds and we see a video that's interesting, but we just don't want to turn the video on because maybe we're watching TV at the same time or we're at work and we don't want to get caught you know on social media and we read the subtitles it's very important <laughs> i i remember one tool that actually does it and i also have a really uh, great a library of videos and it's uh if you know canva for yeah. uh pictures it's canva for videos it's called uh wave videos it's uh w-a-v-e uh video and um, they have a free uh, version and they also have uh, well, uh, paid, which just allows well, you to use more features. But I love the tool and then we use it uh, internally. And um, I believe this is just a great and easy way, not only to add subtitles, but actually, well, just to have the uh, ready layouts for the videos and then different formats that you could instantly use for, well, for Insta stories or for Facebook, then it just makes, um, life easier and I think it's not really expensive it's, it's kind of uh, maybe 200 bucks per year or so so it's just not really it's affordable for sure and it saves lots of time for the for you for your team I love wave and, and I'm glad you remembered that because I didn't I used it every now and then and they do have a free version as well and I believe they just put like an end screen on yeah. there and you can connect your blog feed if you have an RSS feed and it'll automatically create those videos for you an email and you say hey this new video is ready and did they put stock video to it that they think using their AI using what they think fits that sometimes it's wrong and you just have to swap it out but you can always upload your own uh, images as well or, or background uh, video. Uh, great tip there. And anything else that you think that would be useful on this show today? Um, yeah, I think regarding the videos, what we've done and what actually has worked really well for us um, was uh, we had uh, one um, regular article well, um, topic and that was Google News Digest. So what we started doing, one of my team members started doing, she uh, used the tool called Lumen5. It's more, more expensive than Wave and then she just preferred it, but we were, like, they could be done in Wave as well. Um, so she uh, picked several uh, titles from um, the article and created the small overview video 
with um, with the news from and and uh, then we uh, started promoting the videos on social media and what social media really clicked for that video was LinkedIn and um, so that's uh, well she spent not much time um, just adding a couple of um, phrases um, and then well uploading this video but uh, that was a lot more engaging and then report was so quickly repurposing this content really allowed us to engage the audience and also the it will increase the traffic to um, this post so I would I would definitely recommend also using this as um, yeah um, as repurposing tool I think the theme for the show is create more video use subtitles <laughs> and then optimize yeah. your website for voice search right I think that's uh, uh, something that yeah. A lot of people don't really think about a lot, but you definitely want to make sure that you're being found online so that you can get more customers or nurture more customers. It was great having you on the show. I think I need to have you back on because I like to keep the episodes <laughs> as short as possible, but it sounds like you just have so much knowledge that we could probably do a 24-hour conference or virtual conference, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if folks wanted to reach out and learn more about SEM Rush, uh, what is the best way to do that? Um, SEMRush.com slash blog. This is where we put our uh, content. And um, yeah, that's um, just SEMRush.com for, um, for the tool. Uh, you can just type in quickly the domain name and make best uh, and then see the power of the tool right there. And um, I, my social media uh, profiles, they're all in, uh, on one handle. So it's at Olgandrienko with one A in the middle. Um, and it's the same for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I'd be happy to connect on all of those social media profiles. I'll make sure to link those <laughs> in the description. And until then, you can catch previous episodes at hankhoffmeyer.com slash Alexa. I have my YouTube channel full of content. I actually put up these episodes as well. And uh, definitely review and rate this podcast on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes Store, Stitcher, wherever you consume these podcasts. And until then, folks, happy marketing. <laughs>